Thank you for attending ClearFly's portal training, creating orders, voice groups, new numbers, and local port orders. My name is Tom Hall, and I will be your host for the next 30 to 40 minutes. I will tell you this is a brand new opportunity for uh, ClearFly's partners. Uh, ClearFly has uh, given you folks the ability to create your new voice groups, uh, new numbers in your local port orders. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Uh, and I am incredibly excited to show you how to do this. Um, it really gives you folks uh, total control. Uh, of course, the ClearFly Orders Department will oversee uh, the process, but it literally means that you can have a customer that needs service turned up immediately on the weekend and you can go and build that voice group, get them some new numbers and start the porting process um, anytime that you want. So uh, super excited about this. It's a very well thought out um, uh, step oriented process that I think uh, the more that you do, the easier it will become. Uh, I don't think it's difficult at all and uh, hopefully you will uh, agree with that after we get done with this training. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be covering here. Uh, specifically, we are going to cover creating voice group orders that is going to require a project, right? which is real simple. Uh, most customers only have a single voice group. Uh, so typically when a sale or a quote gets won, a project is created and at that point, uh, you'll be able to uh, start building that voice group. Um, once a sale is one, actually, you're going to get a provisioning email. And then uh, once you uh, enable that provisioning email, the project will be created. We're going to make some changes uh, on that process soon. Uh, where it's going to ask you, are you going to want to manage this project or you would like ClearFly to? Uh, but that, uh, as of today, uh, which is the 5th of May uh, that hasn't been implemented as of yet, but the project will be created and you can jump right in there. Uh, we're also gonna be covering creating local port orders. Again, either a project for a new customer is going to be required, or you can add um, an existing, uh, or do a new port order for ex an existing voice group for existing customers. Same scenario with creating new orders or new numbers, either a project for a new customer or an existing voice group, um, creating CFAX orders, project or existing customers, and we'll go through that as well. And then we're also going to discuss disconnecting numbers. As many of you are aware, if a customer disconnects an uh, existing phone number, and ClearFly Orders Department is doing that, there is a $10 disconnect fee per number. So if they've got 10 numbers, it's $100. You now have the ability to disconnect those numbers yourselves. And uh, if you disconnect it and ClearFly Orders Department is not involved in that process, the $10 disconnect fee will be waived. So, um, Great scenario, especially for people that uh, you know initially poured over 400 numbers because that's what they had, and they realized that uh, they only needed 50 numbers. Uh, it could be quite expensive disconnecting all of those through the ClearFly Orders Department, but you can go in there and disconnect, select the numbers you want to disconnect, disconnect, and there's no additional charge to the customer. Okay. So for this, we're going to go ahead and look at the ClearFly demo portal. Um, as I've indicated on all of my training uh, presentations before, your screen may look a little different, again, de depending on your permission levels. But uh, for the purpose of this training, we're going to make the assumption that you do have access to the management support and provisioning dashboard. So that's where we're going to spend all of our time. So let's jump right into it. We're going to go to the management dashboard and we're going to find a customer that we want to build these orders. All right. So you're going to click on the account access. Um, or of course, if it's a new customer, we can look at the project tab and uh, we're going to go ahead and pick duo LLC. 
uh, for this uh, presentation. So we're going to go to that account or go to the project number itself. And just something to keep in mind. So we're going to flip back one screen here real quick. Think of this as a pyramid. All right. You can't create local port orders. You can't create new numbers um, without having the base. And that is a voice group. Okay, that's why on all of these it says a project is required or an existing voice group is needed. Okay, so when we're going through this process, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, create the voice group order. So let's go back and get to the demo portal. Okay, so we're at this project. Uh, for Duo LLC, uh, project number P1000. And as you can see, nothing has been done. All right, the implementation manager is Joe Smith, who is the person at ABC Telecom. And uh, Michael Bluth is the uh, project manager at Clearfly. All right. Um, so the first thing we want to do, because we got a blank screen here, we're going to click the action button and we're going to create the voice group order. All right. Again, we got to, we got to get that base established. So we're going to go ahead and create the voice group order. And then it's going to reference the project, which we know it is P1000. If there are multiple projects, they would all be listed out here, but for duo LLC, there's only one project. So it's P1000. We're going to select the billing account. This is the primary location where the service is going to be used. All right. So this customer has two locations. Um, we're going to pick the 333 Baxter Street as their primary. All right. We're going to click next. And now we're going to build a configuration based on the quote. So let's actually just go back to this project real quick. We'll just open up another tab. And we're going to look at the quote. And we can see based on the quote, it was six trunks and 20 phone numbers with a local port order and a CFAX 750. All right. So now we come back to this vo voice group order. Configuration is going to be native because there was no ad trans uh, attached to that. And the concurrent calls were six. Multi-location trunk. Uh, we did see two addresses, so we're going to say yes. And how many DID digits um, do we want to tr uh, transfer? So typically, most PBXs will take 10. Uh, you can change that all the way down to three if that's the number that you wanted. But typically, the default is fine at 10. Uh, unavailable forward. I strongly encourage everyone to put an unavailable forward number in here. All right. The, what the unavailable forward is, if you've forgotten, is if Clearfly loses connectivity to the PBX for whatever reason, it could be the PBX is down, it could be a power outage, it could be an internet outage. Clearfly could have an issue. Um, where do you want incoming calls forwarded to? So again, I'm very surprised that people don't have that set by default. Um, since you're building this, it gives you an opportunity to go ahead and enter that number. And I strongly, strongly encourage that. So we're going to go ahead and enter a number. We'll just do um, my cell phone. All right. And you're going to set the default calling name. This is important. Because whatever you put in here, when we get the numbers, whether they're ported or they're new, they're going to utilize the CNAM. Now, as you know um, in, from previous training sessions, you can change the CNAM um, for every individual number if you would like. But we do want to set a default. So this is Duo LLC. So we're going to go Duo LLC. We ha are limited to 15 characters. If you try to go beyond 15 characters, uh, you will get an error. 
all right? It will give you an error and it will tell you why. All right, so let's just go and delete those out of there. And we're gonna click next. All right, at this point it's a review of the voice group. So re it's regarding project 1000, the billing account is going to be the 333 Baxter Street. Uh, there's gonna be six concurrent calls. We're gonna have multi-location trunking, so we are going to have another address. Um, we're gonna uh, transfer 10 DID digits. The default calling name is Duo LLC and the unavailable forward number is 702-523-4086. If any of this is wrong, you can click back and go and make whatever adjustments you need to make. Click next. And once that's set, you're gonna create the order. All right, you will get an indication that the order was created. All right, at this point, you're going to wanna to submit the order. That informs Clearfly that they need to, uh, or our switch needs to build that. So we're gonna click submit. It will give you a note, submitting this order will automatically begin the provisioning for voice services. Billing will not commence until you complete the order at a later time, all right? So this is just building the voice group within Clearfly's meta switch, all right? Billing hasn't started. You're gonna to have to click a complete order for that to happen. So you're gonna submit the order. It's going to say success and the status is submitted. All right, it will say complete when that voice group has been uh, built on the Clearfly meta switch. All right, so that's pretty easy, right? So that's the first step. If we can now go back to the project, we do see an order and it is a voice group order. It has been submitted, it is not complete yet. And that is the order number. If you need to add a comment, to that voice group so Clearfly's orders department uh, can intervene. You're gonna click on that order number, you're going to add a comment here and you're gonna click add, okay? Uh, they will get notified and they will respond appropriately. If you would like to add other people uh, within your organization or uh, people from Duo LLC, onto this so they can watch the progress, you can come up and you can click the add button, use the pull down menu. And if there was somebody at Duo LLC, they would be listed there. Or if there's other people within your organization, um, they're gonna also be listed here. So we're gonna add Joe Smith, okay? All right. I guess Joe Smith is the person doing this order, so I can't add myself, sorry. All right, so let's go back to the project. Um, now, we got the base. Now we need to uh, start the process of the ports. Um, so again, we're just gonna go right down the line, create port order. And again, if we look at the quote itself, there's 20 numbers. Local number uh, is 10. I know that only half, sorry, local number port order is one. Um, I know that there, out of these telephone numbers, 10 are going to be ported and 10 are going to be new. All right, that's just my assumption based on, I work for ABC Telecom and I'm Joe Smith. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna create port order. Uh, we're going to, select the voice group. Like I said, most customers will have a single voice group. So we're gonna use voice group VG7, which we just set up. Create the order. Again, it's referencing the project. The voice group, the billing account, which we know is 333 Baxter Street. And we're going to click next. The calling name or the CNAM we set when we set up the voice group. So it's pulled that information forward. And this is just a review and we're going to click create order. Okay. Now we have to add the phone numbers. All right. 
Since it's a demo portal, um, we have a limited number of numbers that we can actually show on here. So I'm actually just going to port over two numbers. Uh, I'm actually just going to port over one number. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to come to the number action button. You're going to click that and you're going to click bulk number add. All right. If you know the phone numbers, you can simply copy and paste those in here. Um, and that will be fine. Uh, for this, since we're only going to actually port one number because I know of one number that is going to work in the demo portal. So we're going to do a 406-545-2680 and we're going to click add. Again, you can just continue to add a phone number all the way down. A uh, single number um, per line would be the best. All right. We're going to click add. Oh, maybe I used that number previously. So it did tell me that that number overlaps so that it is being processed on another order. Uh, so little checks and balances there. So let's see if we can come up with a new number. Um, 406-545-2681. There we go. All right, so that was successful. Now we can see the port group here. If there's multiple carriers, you're going to have multiple numbers here or in multiple port groups. And initially when you when you select the numbers, you're going to see a lot of red. Okay? On the port order. We need to get rid of all that red. So the way you go about doing that is you're going to come to the group action button you're going to click manage and you're going to go and populate this information we need to know the organization's name and so this is going to be duo llc authorized name uh, this is whoever's authorized on their existing account um, and we're just going to say tom hall and we're going to enter the BTN number. Okay, whatever that BTN number for that account is, it may or may not be the number that you're porting, uh, but you're going to need to find that out. Uh, typically, by looking at the phone bill, you can see what that BTN number is. So we're going to do 406 545. We're just going to do the number that we're porting. We're going to make the assumption that that is the BTN number. If you know the account number, awesome, go ahead and put it in there. Same scenario with the account PIN. If the losing carrier requires a PIN, you're gonna to wanna to enter that information as well. And then it's going to ask you for the account's address. It is a pull down menu. It is going to pull down all the locations that were listed on the quote, all right? We know 333 Baxter Street is the billing address, so we can go ahead and enter that. If the address on the existing bill is not one of the addresses here, because maybe they moved, you can just go ahead and enter that information uh, without the suggestions, okay? Standardized, just leave that as yes. It's showing you that the current provider is level three. That is the phone number. And we're gonna click update. Okay, so now we can see all the red is gone. Um, we've got a local port order and everything is good and we now need to submit that. Okay, as I said, if you enter the phone numbers and they're from different carriers, you're going to end up having more than one port, port group listed here and you're going to have to do the group action for each of those uh, individual carriers to make sure that uh, there's no red. So once there's no red on this page, you're gonna click Submit, and it will state, this will submit the order for processing and send an e-sign request for a letter of agency specified 
are specific to this order. All right, so we are going to send an LOA. It is now going to ask you to select the, the date and the time. It will tell you what your time zone is based on your profile. All right, so in my very first training session, the, the uh, Clearfly portal overview, I showed you how to make sure that your time zone was set properly. So you're going to want to make sure that your time zone is set properly. All right, because you're going to be specifying your time, not having to calculate what it is mountain standard. So in this profile, um, Joe Smith is mountain time, so we're gonna keep that. We're gonna select the date. And I'm gonna do something here because this is really pretty interesting. So if we pick May 25th, which we all know is Memorial Day and, uh, and a public holiday, uh, we're going to get an error. So we picked May 25th. We're going to select the time. We're going to say 9 a.m. And we're going to specify who to send a letter of agency through to. Now, if Duo LLC had some people listed here, they would be they would appear. All right. If you're currently authorized on that customer's existing phone account, and you can go ahead and select that. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to enter a name. And just something to keep in mind here, as I've discussed in previous uh, trainings as well, you're going to want to put whatever their legal name is. All right. If they go by a nickname like um, Chumley, um, you're not going to want to put Thomas Chumley Hall. All right, because that's what's going to show up on their documents. So make sure it's, it's a legal name, uh, no nicknames. You can put the name in, you're going to put their email address in, and you're going to click Submit. As I indicated, since May 25th is Memorial Day, you did get an error. States it up on the top in red, cannot port on 525-2020 as it is a porting holiday, all right? So now you need to click the submit button again and go through and pick a more appropriate date. So we'll do May 26th. Again, we're gonna do 9 a.m. And we're gonna put in, we'll just Tom Hall and there's the email address and click submit, all right? So now it states letter of agency must be signed. So this will not progress any further than it is until we receive the letter of agency back. We can see that that letter of agency has been sent. So there's a LOA, it's document number three, and it's been submitted, okay? Has not been signed or completed. So now if we go back to the project, we can see that we have a local port order that's been submitted which uh, uh, with a requested date of 526. And we have a voice group, which again is the base, and that has also been submitted. All right, these will eventually roll to being complete. All right, so now, so we got one number, and again, if we look at the quote, there are 20 numbers that were quoted, so we need to get 19 new numbers. So we're gonna click the action button. We're gonna create new number order. We're gonna come to the voice group. We're gonna select the VG7, which is again the base, create order. And now you have a couple of options. If you select automatic, so assignment method automatic, the Clearfly system will randomly go and grab you some phone numbers and whatever quantity we specify in the next step, all right? If you want to select the numbers, you're gonna change that to manual search. We're gonna click next. Again, is pulling the calling name or the CNAM from the voice group. We're gonna select next. 
and now we're going to create the order. So again, it's a review, project, voice group, billing account number. You're going to do a manual search, and the CNAM is going to be Duo LLC. We're going to create order, and now we're going to uh, do a number search. All right, we have not gotten any numbers yet, so if you hit the submit button, it's going to give you an error. All right, you first you must first search for and select numbers before submitting. Okay. So we're going to click the number search. You have an option under number search style. Basic is just purely numbers. Advanced is a combination of numbers in letters. So if somebody wanted uh, a name that uh, states duo at the end, then you're going to select advanced. And you're going to enter the area code. And you're going to enter a star as like a wild card. And then you're going to enter duo. OK. And then you're going to go ahead and, and search. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to do basic. Because again, this is a demo portal. So I've got limited numbers I can pull from. Um, you can enter the area code here, the NPA uh, area code, or in the first three digits if you're looking for something specific. Otherwise, you can go ahead and select graphic filtering, which is my preference. You can select the rate center, the state, the city, the postal code, whatever you'd like to enter in here. So we're going to do rate center, and we're going to put Bozeman. Um, so all you have to do is start typing out the uh, the rate center name, it's typically the town, and you're going to select Bozeman. All right. We are going to want a sequential. We want to see sequential numbers. You don't have to do that, but if you're doing a manual search, you might as well do sequential. And then you can select how many maximum uh, numbers uh, do you want to see, and we want to see 25. And then you can click search. At this point, we're going to scroll down to the bottom. We have, it's pulled up the first 25 numbers, and here they are. All right, we know we only needed 19, uh, but if you decide, okay, well, you know what, we're going to take all the numbers, you can come to the actions button and you can select all. All right, now there's a green check mark next to all the numbers. Or you can unselect all. But if we scroll through there and think, okay, we want 19 numbers, we're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and we're going to take these last two, 18, 19. And we're going to click Reserve. All right. At this point in time, those numbers are on hold out of the Bozeman Rate Center. You have four hours to click this submit button. So if you want to take these numbers and view as text, copy it, send it to the customer and say, hey, are these OK numbers? Uh, you can do so. Just keep in mind that you've got four hours. And then they're going to be available for somebody else to pick. All right. But if they all look good, everything looks good on there, you're going to click submit. All right. And at this point, as soon as you click submit, we're going to go out and we're going to reserve those phone numbers for you. And they are yours. All right. So here we are. There's your phone numbers. If we look at the project, we can see local number, direct inward dial, and it is marked as complete. If you want to verify that you have those numbers, you can come to the voice group. So you go to the voice group order, go to the voice group number, and there they are. All right. 
The reason it shows 21 versus 20, because again, the quote shows 20, right? Is because Clearfly needs to get a local number to build the voice group. So if we scroll through here, we can see that uh, there is a number, an extra number on here. It's probably gonna be the first one, which is what the voice group was built on, okay? We can also see that these are all active, except for the number that we're porting, all right? And that's currently in, in a uh, provisioning state because we're waiting for that LOA, LOA and then we're waiting for confirmation from the losing carrier, okay? So let's go back to the project. So that's pretty well all set. Now, since again, this quote shows a CFAX 750 with an analog adapter, we need to add that to the project, all right? Um, so what you're gonna do is click the Actions button, order CFAX account. Again, it's referencing the project. We're gonna select the billing account number, which we know is the band number four and then number type, existing number or new number, all right? If you select new number, it's gonna be an automatic assignment, all right? So what I would do is if you wanna keep it in line with the other numbers, you're gonna select existing number, we're gonna select next, and then you're going to find the number that you've already, that are already assigned to the voice group. So these are the 20 numbers, right? Or the 19 numbers that we pulled from, plus the porting number. All right, we're gonna select that. So we'll just use 402-209-0261. Check number, says already an active number on the account and will be converted to CFAX. So keep that in mind. If you're doing a CFAX on a order and the customer needs 20 DIDs and a fax number, when you do your new number request, you're going to want to request 21 numbers because we're going to pull one of those from a DID and move it to a fax. So let's go ahead and click next. Now you're gonna select the CFAX plan. And again, if we look at the quote, it was a CFAX 750. So we're gonna to go to CFAX 750, click next. And now it's gonna ask us about the send and in, uh, receive configuration, all right? Email only, which means that we don't need an ATA, but the ATA was quoted, so we're gonna do an email and analog adapter, or maybe we're just gonna do straight ATA, all right? It's gonna be depending on your customer. We're going to do an email and analog adapter. Click next. And typically in that type of scenario, people send uh, or people receive to the email and they send from a fax. So we're gonna click add senders. And we're going to go ahead and click the email address. All right, so we're gonna enter the email address. We can enter up to 10 email addresses per CFAX account. Um, we're going to say that this email address can send faxes and receive faxes. And also, this email address is going to receive notifications if there's an issue, all right? So we're gonna click Add, all right? Now, we can continue to add some additional people if we'd like, all right? So maybe we want to, and we're gonna put in My other email address, and that one can only receive. So we're gonna say send as faxes as no, receive yes, and this email address, we don't wanna have receive notification if there's errors. 
and we're going to click add. All right, so there they are. Now we're going to click next because again, we know that there's an ATA. We're going to click next. Now it's going to ask us about the ATA. Um, and how do we want that ATA set up? Do we want that ATA to send and receive um, faxes or send only? We're going to say send only. All right. And then what email address would we like to have um, uh, messages sent if there's an error with the ATA? So we're just going to go ahead and use the primary one. And now it asks us, do you want us to ship an ATA? Yes, ship a new ATA, or if you have one in stock, you can select no. We're going to say select, uh, we're going to select yes, ship a new ATA. We're going to click next. And at this point, it's going to give us some options for shipping addresses. Uh, the suggestions are going to be the customer's headquarters or the partner, ABC Telecom, their address, or any of the addresses for Duo LLC. I personally, unless it's a long drive, I personally would like to receive that at my office before I go to that site. So I'm going to go ahead and select ABC Telecom and that information gets populated. Again, if you wanted to go to a different address, you can just go ahead and type in that address information. Okay. So now you're going to click next. And at this point, it's just a recap of what we've done. There's an order review project, uh, service address. This is the fax number now. And we've got it set up for uh, these two email addresses. Uh, the tom.hall at clearfly.net is sending and receiving. The thall22963 at Gmail is only receiving. Uh, the ATA is set up to send only, and we're shipping a new ATA to ABC Telecom Headquarter at 26 Lewis Avenue, Billings, Montana. Now we're going to click Create, and it is now pending. And if we go back to the project itself, we've got two new orders. So we have an equipment order, which is really going to be the equipment order, just like I said. Uh, it's going to have, we're going to be shipping the ATA to the address specified on here. And if you want to verify it, you can click on the order number. Uh, the fax is a service, and that is the fax. So again, we can take a look at that as well. Uh, we're moving an existing number over. There's the number. It's going to be a CFAX 750, and it also is a recap with the uh, shipping. Okay. So let's go back, and they're pending. All right. So that's pretty much it. Um, let's go back to the project real quick. And there's everything. Um, so that's how you would create an order uh, or orders on a project. Okay. Now let's take a look at creating orders on an existing customer. So again, we're going to come to the management dashboard. I know, for example, widgets here is an existing customer and they're being billed and they have service already enabled. So we're going to click on the customer. We're going to come to the voice tab because again, we want to, we want to do some tweaking or adding to an existing voice group. And we're going to go ahead and specify, we're going to go to the voice group number one. So we can see that they have all of these numbers, okay? And maybe they want to add a new fax, all right? So what we're going to do is um, <clears throat> you can 
actually there's a couple different ways so we can come in and we can find a number I don't know this one here and we can click on the number that we want to convert to a fax we can come over to the actions button and order C fax all right then it's going to walk us through that exact same process we just did and it's going to convert this number to whatever C fax product that you would like all right another option is again from the customer's view you come to the voice tab come down to the voice service all right not voice groups but voice service you're going to click action and order cfax there as well all right and if you go from this route then you're going to have to go and scroll through the list of the numbers and select the number that you want versus coming up to the way that I showed you originally and you scroll through the number here specify the number and actions order CFAX okay same scenario if we are looking to add additional phone numbers to an existing customer again we know widgets is existing we come to the voice tab we come to the voice group that we want to add new numbers to so voice group number one we're going to come over to related orders all right so this is going this order is going to relate back to the voice group again keep in mind the voice group is the bottom of the pyramid so it is a related order we're going to come to the action button you can either create a new port order or you can create a new number order and again it's just the exact same scenario as what I went through before so create new number order it's now specifying maybe this is not a project so we can remove it from indicating it's a project because again it's an existing customer um, voice group number one assignment method automatic or manual and it's just through that process again all right okay so that's how to create orders for a new customer and how to create orders for an existing customer now if the customer needs to have a new voice group added so as we can see this customer widgets has two voice groups if they need another voice group because maybe they're putting in a third pbx you're going to need to create a ticket and clearfly will uh, start that process for you all right there's no way for you to build a voice group a new voice group uh, on an existing customer without a project or a ticket all right so in that scenario you're going to click a ticket and you're going to specify add new voice group all right and clearfly's orders department will intervene on that point um all right last thing i wanted to cover during this session was how to disconnect numbers and you may have seen that screen a little bit earlier um, so if we come to the voice group to disconnect phone numbers you're going to come to the customer you're going to come to the voice tab you're going to select the voice group that you're going to want to disconnect numbers from so we're going to pick vg1 and at this point what you can do is you can click the disconnect numbers icon here right under action if you're going to be disconnecting a whole bunch of numbers or if you're going to disconnect a specific number so maybe we were just disconnecting this one here 406-838-8009 you would click on that number click the action button and click disconnect number all right it now will confirm that you want to disconnect that number and it will say this will disconnect this phone number and remove it from the switch if necessary if you click disconnect that number is now gone all right it ended in 8009 if we look back at that voice group scroll to the bottom it is no longer listed here so it has been removed it's as simple as that if you want to disconnect a group of numbers again from the voice group you're going to click the action button 
disconnect numbers and you're going to list out the phone numbers that you want to disconnect. So that's a copy and paste. All right. The best scenario for that is easiest way to do that is from the voice group, scroll to the bottom of the phone numbers, click as text, click full, and we're going to disconnect uh, the 8028 all the way to 8025. So I would simply copy it. Close it. Come back to the actions button. Disconnect numbers. Paste. And disconnect telephone numbers. And now they're gone. So if we go back to, uh, I guess those numbers are not active. If they were active, we could disconnect them. They're not active, so they didn't get, di get, didn't get disconnected. So we'd have to find some other ones, but that is the process. All right, um, so that's pretty much it. That is what I wanted to cover. Again, what we went through was creating voice group orders, again, Keep in mind the voice group is always the bottom of that pyramid. Uh, we created local port orders. We created new number orders. And we created CFAX orders and also went over how to disconnect numbers. Okay. So the disconnecting numbers is always for an existing customer. Uh, these options are available for uh, new or new and existing customers. All right. If you have any questions, uh, the folks in the ClearFly Orders Department are always happy to help. Um, those are the three contacts at uh, ClearFly Orders, uh, Ray Van Spore, Sabre Noble, and Kelly Williams. Uh, my suggestion is that instead of reaching out to any of those individuals directly, you should reach out to the Orders Department that way, if any of those uh, three ladies are out of the office, uh, somebody will be able to help you immediately. So emails should typically go to orders at clearfly.net, or you can dial the toll-free number 866-652-7520, and they are option three. So that's it, folks. Uh, thank you so much for participating in this training session. Um, my name is Tom Hall, and uh, if you need anything from me, uh, I can also be reached at tom.hall at clearfly.net. And uh, all of us at Clearfly greatly appreciate your support and your business, and uh, we truly do understand that our success is 100% dependent on yours, so we are always here to help uh, in any way, shape, or form that we can. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic week and uh, take care.